but somehow only to go even further and then understanding better the rule of nature, the rule of life. So I study science, astrophysics, biology. And then I got really interested into minerals because it's universal. The plants are different everywhere in the world, but not minerals. And it's only speaking to anyone. And I bumped into that really interesting book of a paleontologist that traveled around Mediterranean, especially mm. Greece area, and she somehow found a link between fossil discoveries and mythology. Mythology, most of the time, a narrative exaggerated to really part of the culture, and then somehow like the monster that human build up into their fear, somehow translated into the discovery of fossil. Let's say in Greece, used to be a really ancient mammals, elephant for example, and rhinoceros. Mm. And, but in the antiquity, when they found it, they never saw any elephant in their life. So from discovering a skull of elephants, they somehow come up with the... Cyclop. Cyclop, exactly, because you have the trunk of the elephant and ah. it's a hole, and they come up with the cyclop. When I read it, I was like, this is so great because it creates this bridge between nature, which is fossil discovery, and culture, which is mythology. I went to, into that path and then I started to collect my own fossil, but most of them are in Samara, in my actual duo solo with Sebastian. So mm. most of the big ones are there. I have a really big one, this one. So when I collect it, it's from Tokopedia. Wow. Which means there is no knowledge. I don't know what's this, and this one I even don't know because I'm not a biologist. I don't know the morphology of creature. So my state of mind, it's exactly like the ancient people when they discovered fossil. So when I look at this, I can create my own monster mm -hmm. or my own creature because I don't know if it's from an elephant or whatever. So from that, I create my own monster. And then I study what's a monster, why we created monsters as humans, because they don't exist. Monster is somehow a catharsis way of our mind to put our fear or the worst side of ourselves or the most intimate one, and then we put it on monster. You will never see animals that kill just for no reason or someone or something just for no reason. It's properly human. And then we put it into monster. And monster means to show in Latin. So I started, okay, I will show my monster. <laughs> so that's why the monster I made are really abstract and really intimate process. You take some paper, I paint them with a mineral pigment that I collect, that I forage. Some are from Malaysia, some from Indonesia, some from France because I'm half French. And then some are from Italy. So I paint with this pigment, talking about fossil mineral, then I want to paint with mineral too. That makes sense for me. Yeah? Yeah. From the national park, I foraged myself. It was raining insanely and I got lost into the national park. I was my fiancé and he was like, wait, it's already 6 p.m., there is no sun. And we lost, and I'm like, wait! <laughs> <laughs> and it was like raining so bad. <laughs> and what, like, A, 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 A? So that's my special code. Uh -huh. uh, A, A are really thin one. The okay. third filtered one. The second one is the second filter. Mm -hmm. And the A one, I use it to do sculpture. Mm -hmm. The really thin one, they can go through my airbrush because I paint yeah. with airbrush. Yeah. So it has to be really thin. Mm -hmm. So I have to filter it many times. It takes weeks. So these are my painting, my last one. You know when I told you about monster, that is what we have inside that is quite intimate. And we don't really want to show it. This one, as you can see, the first layer is white. And then I slice it to see what's inside. It's the process of seeing the mineral pigment inside. So when you move in front of the artwork, the color change because it's 3D. That's my last thing for art moment. I also did this sculpture. For this one, it's only talking about mineral. I took a fossil. I think it's oyster fossil. And from that, same process that I told you. I take the fossil, 
and then I create my list. Because fossil most of the time is only part of something. So I took the fossil and I was like, what kind of shape the beast was. So I made my own monster. The technique is Cagliola. It's an Italian super traditional technique of making a fake marble. So all natural with collagen and plaster and mineral pigment. Always try my best to be not green, but not to harm the environment. I'm talking about environment. I'm working with it always using minerals, so it's kind of logical for me not to harm it. So I always do my best, but I'm not an ecologist artist. I don't want to be, I just do my best. So this is the place where I paint. So it's a total mess. I just use my pigments. I do my own medium that I have to grind myself for hours. <laughs> and then I put it in the airbrush with the medium. And then I just simply airbrush the paper. Okay. The paper is a banana paper made in Bandung, handmade. So yeah, as I told you, I try to be as local mm -hmm. and natural. And using natural paper is super important because the paper that we usually buy in the shop, they have acid in it, which make it moldy faster mm -hmm. than the natural paper. Okay. So it's way safer than the paper that we usually buy and then so this is i wanted to show you basically the process of making the pigment taking raw soil and putting here and then you just grind it and then filter it at the end you have as thin as this one that can go to the airbrush the blue is very special mm. blue is super rare mm. so it's from lapis lazuli and this really hardcore stone to grind. <laughs> you see differently colors. Usually when it's from the tube, it's kind of, yeah, whatever, blue or yellow, you don't see the value of it. But once you do natural, ancient way to do pigment, then you reconsider all this thing, how easy it is now to make art and mm -hmm. it's challenging. So now when I look at earth, it's not the same way than before when I travel. And, Make it pretty interesting, by the way. Yeah. Where do you get it this from? Oh, this one, this one, no. Oh, lapis lazuli is not really the best because okay. most of the time from Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. We know the condition there. We know there is a mafia of lapis lazuli. So I don't buy my lapis lazuli anymore because my mom have many hippie friend has a <laughs> necklace of lapis lazuli from <laughs> all time and they just like, give it to me. So I have recycled it, but I don't buy it. So your mom has to make more friends. Yeah, exactly. So more friends. Has to be <laughs>